In this video, we are going to talk about waves. We are going to solve some practice question under waves. So I've got the first question here which is saying a transverse wave with a speed of 50.0 meters per second are to be produced on a stretched string a 5.00 meters length of a string with a total mass of 0 0.6 0 0.06 kg is used but a what is the required tension in the string but b calculate the wave speed in the string if the tension is 8 newtons now the wave speed the wave speed in a, uh, on a string is given by the tension force divided by the linear density so linear density is just basically the mass per unit uh, length so it is given by the mass divided by the length and its SI unit is kgs per meter so now we have the velocity we have been told that the velocity is 50 meters per second then we don't know the linear density but we have been given the mass of the string the length of the string so let's go ahead and find the linear density so linear density is going to be equal to the mass of the string is 0 0.06 we divide it by the length which is 5 so our linear density is going to be equal to we have 0 0.06 divided by 5 I'm getting 0 0.0 to 0.012 kgs per meter so that is our linear density so let's put it here our linear density is 0 0.01 uh, 0 0.012 kgs per meter okay now we have everything we can now go ahead and find the tension force so we are saying that v is equal to the root of the force divided by the linear density so let's go ahead and plug in the values so the velocity is 50 has to be equal to the square root of the force which we don't which we don't know is the one we are trying to find then we're also trying uh, the linear density is 0 0.012 okay so what we're going to do now is uh, we are going to square both sides so that we get lead of the square root so it's going to be 50 squared is going to be equal to the force divided by 0 0.012 okay so now we are going to see that the force is going to be equal to the 50 squared times 0 0.012 so our tension force is going to be equal to 0 0.012 times 50 squared okay so I'm getting 30 newtons so this is our tension force okay then part B is saying calculate the wave speed in the string if the tension force is a uh, uh, 8 newtons so now if the tension force is 8 newtons the linear density will not change it's going to be the same okay the linear density will not change so the same formula will maintain so it's v the square root of the force divided by the linear density so we have v the force is uh, 8 now and then the linear density remains the same because we're talking about the, the length will not change the length will remain the same 5 meters the mass of the string will remain the same 0 0.06 okay so we are going to see that it's going to be 8 divided by 0 0.1 0 0.012 and then we get the square root which is giving me 25.82 meters per second so this is going to be our velocity okay now we have also the next question which is saying an object attached to a spring vibrate with a simple harmonic motion as described by the figure below for this motion find but a the amplitude but b the period c the angular frequency d the maximum speed e the maximum acceleration and f uh, the equation for its position x in terms of the sine function now whenever we have been given the graph what we need to understand is that the period is the distance from the equilibrium position all the way to where the graph has gone how far the graph has gone okay so in short we can say that the vertical displacement so from this point here all the way to this point we can see that it is two centimeters meaning that our amplitude is two centimeters 
Okay, that is part A. Then what is the period? The period is just basically uh, the time it takes to complete one cycle. So as we can see from the graph here, to complete one cycle, what we mean is uh, starting from here all the way to this part here, that is one wavelength. So to complete one cycle, what time do we have? We have got four, meaning that that is our period. Okay, so if we get this part here and then we combine it with this part here, we are going to form a circle. Okay, so to complete one cycle from this point all the way to this point, that is the period. The time it takes to complete one cycle. So in this, in, in this case, the time it takes to complete one cycle is four seconds. Okay, so we have got the four seconds. That is what we have. That will be our period. So our period is uh, uh, four seconds. Okay, the next one is saying we need to find the angular frequency. Now, how do we find the angular frequency? We know that angular frequency is given by 2 pi f. But we know that the frequency is 1 over period. So we can replace this part with the, where there is frequency. Okay, so we, are, we can see that this is going to give us um, 2 pi then times 1 over the period, which is the same as just this. And if you can remember very well, when we are driving this formula, it is coming from here for, for it to, to go there. Okay, so what we need to understand from here is that um, this angular frequency, in circular motion is what we call the angular velocity. Now, for those who want to know where this formula is coming from, it's just basically simple. We know that uh, the velocity is given by the distance over time. But uh, when we come to circular motion, this velocity, it is the linear velocity. When we go to circular motion, it's going to be the angular velocity. Then this part here, it is the linear displacement. When we go to uh, um, uh, rotational motion we are going to see that this part here is going to be the linear the angular displacement sorry then the time is just basically the same t now when we are talking about the full circle this is the same as we're talking about 2 pi okay we're talking about 2 pi okay so meaning that we are going to say that this is going to be equal to 2 pi then the t is just basically to complete one cycle is the period so this is where this formula is coming from Okay, now we want to plug in the values, we see what we are going to have. So we have got, this is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by what? The period. And the period is 4, so we are going to say that this is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by 4. So as we can see, um, 2 here and 4 there is going to be 2. So we are going to have pi over so if you want, you can leave it here and say it's going to be large per second. Or you can you can simplify and say it's going to be pi divided by 2, which is going to give you 1.57, 1 71 large per second, which is just the same. Okay, so we have found our angular speed as um, 1.57, 1 large per second but if we want we can just use the simple one which is going to be um which is going to be the pi over two large per second okay cool now the next question is saying we need to find the what the next question is saying the maximum speed now when you come to waves when we are talking about the maximum speed this is the formula okay the maximum speed is given by um the angular frequency times the amplitude. So let's plug in the values and see what we are going to get. So the the angular frequency is just basically 2 over pi over 2 times. Uh, we have So this one we, we have to convert it into meters, which is going to be 2 divided by 100, which is going to be, it's going to give us 0 .0, 0 0.02. Okay, so 0 0.02 um we have pi shift pi divided by 2 the answer we get times 0 0.02 so i'm getting my maximum speed as 0 0.0314 meters per second so this is our maximum velocity
What about the maximum acceleration? The maximum acceleration when it comes for waves is just the matter of us um, using this simple formula. So the, acceler the maximum acceleration under waves is given by um, the angular frequency squared times the, f um, the amplitude. So let's go ahead and plug in the values. We know that this is given by this times the amplitude is 0 0.02. Now we have to square it. Oh, sorry. We have to square the uh, the angular frequency. We have to square this times 0 0.02. Okay. So we have uh, the pi. We have pi uh, divided by 2. Then the answer I get I square it. And then I'm getting 2.4674011 times 0 0.02. I'm getting my angle, my maximum acceleration as 0 0.0493 meters per second squared. So this is my maximum acceleration. Then part F is saying the equation for its position x in terms of the sine function. Now here we know that the formula for calculating the displacement as a sine as a uh, uh, as a function of time is given by the amplitude cos the angular frequency times time but here the question is saying in terms of the sine function meaning where there is sine we need to put cos oh, sorry where there is cos we need to put sine so it's going to be the x is going to be a sine the angular frequency times time Okay, so what we are going to do there is um, we are going to have what is our amplitude. Now we need to convert it into minutes. If you want, you can specify to say two centimeters, and then you put sine, then you put this. The angular frequency is this pi over two, and then times t. Meaning this is going to be our formula. Or you can say you can convert this one and put it in meters, which is going to be 0 0.02 meters, then sine pi over two then times t. So all these are answers. You can either use this or this as long as you are going to specify to say this is centimeters and the, this is the meters. So this is how we get to, to know how to find the amplitude, the angular frequency, the period, the maximum speed, the maximum acceleration and everything. Okay.